Hello everyone, this is the eighth video in my Middle Earth collectible card game strategy series. Um, after having been clobbered by Theo, I think it's time to rethink some things about the deck. <clears throat> and just in general illustrate, you never really fully finish a deck. You should always be willing to revise and play test and react to defeats to see if you can tweak it a little better. Now, there were several issues that we ran into and one potential issue that did not specifically happen but um, came up in the context of discussions after the game that I think we should guard against. Item number one, the hazard deck was almost completely ineffective against the O strategy. While you won't have a hazard deck that's equally effective against anything your opponent plays, you really do need to have a hazard deck that can at least throw some problems someone's way, almost no matter what they're playing. Problem number two is that we got hammered by his hazards and needed some ability to protect ourselves against that sort of man-based hazard strategy a bit better. Item number three is that there were some synergistic weaknesses revealed, especially the Noble Hounds do not actually seem to be very good allies for this deck fit. Um, because we're relying on fellowships to provide corruption protection, we don't, um, we run into a problem. The, the Hounds themselves are kind of a weak point. They don't have warrior skill, they can't be given items. They have to fight before um, the controlling characters do. And to top it all off, they only have a six body. So, as demonstrated with the game with Theo, it was actually on their immediately first outing. Ran into a combat, got into a fight, got killed, lost the fellowship. So, I think we should eliminate the Noble Hounds and replace them with other resources. We also... A potential problem is the card Unhappy Blows. It didn't come up in the game. But if you have both dwarves and elves together in the deck, you can have someone bounce back to your hand, and then that would kill our fellowships, which again, we're relying on fairly heavily. Now, the main reason we need elves in particular is we have the um, elves of Linden, but even then, it's not essential, essential. The other reason is that Curdan is just a great um, character, but I do think we could have an acceptable substitution with Thrain as our starting heavy. So I'm going to at least try a version without any of the elves. We'll probably keep the elves of Linden for now. Um, I mean, we can still play them, but we'll try an all dwarf strategy. So um, I think I want to get rid of the block. You know, if we're doing all dwarves, we might want to try the Ark of the Stone. Now, this won't give us any direct combat utility, but it does give plus three DI against dwarves and dwarf factions. And it can also, you can tap the stone to untap one of the people of our party, which has combat utility. And now that I'm thinking about it, now if we're going to add a second greater item, then let me just pull up a geography display. Because if we're going to include a second greater item, that means we need a second site to play a greater item. Mount Gundabad is the obvious choice because it's more or less in the same area as the rest of our stuff. But now we can't go in one turn from Mount Gundabad to the Grave Havens. So if we're going to get rid of the elves, actually I do now think we should do it all the way. Uh, we'll get rid of the Elves of Linden. We'll get rid of the Alliance of Free Peoples, which we never got a chance to play anyway. Now this leaves us a little undergunned when it comes to allies and um, factions. But if we're shifting a bit over to the east, I think we can afford to include Gollum. Now Gollum um, is worth two points, so he's worth more than one of the... We can't play him... Un Unfortunately, we cannot play him like, uh, you know, the Noble Hounds after we've played a, after we've played a something, you know, tap site. But 
if the party shrinks small, he can help us cancel some stuff. And he's worth two points to the dogs one. Um, I also think we should have some dark quarrels. Maybe even three. Um, that will just cancel an attack by orcs, trolls, or men. Um, and, you know, we, we are now going to somewhat darker areas. Trolls are concerned. Men are hammering us pretty bad. So, the starting party would then be... So I think... One, two, six, seven, seven, eleven, thirteen. Okay, we're down to thirteen. But, you know, I do think we that, that's still good enough. And we do have five corruption boosters and a fellowship. We're a little more vulnerable because we've added another item, a fairly corrupting item. But let's think. Um, so starting party would probably be Thrain, one of the five mind dwarves. Thrain has five direct influence against dwarves, so he can have either Balin or Gloin follow him, or we could just have a collection of smaller dwarves follow him. Um, would like Oin for another ranger. So that's 12. 12, 17. Let's add Biffer and Boffer to the pool, and um, we'll add some more Mind Dwarves, Thrain and Dwellin. I like the two sevens a little bit better than the three six prowess dwarves that are one mind. Um, again, just especially given our access to fellowships. I don't want to have a better than 50 chance if someone dies. Does Ori not make it? Ridiculous. Um, I'll just try manually inserting him. There we go. Now, with this setup, if we start with Thrain. Um, then we play Ori, uh, not Ori, we play Oin, Balin, 9, 14, 17, and then one of the two Mind Dwarves and one of the one Mind Dwarves. We'll have five characters, so a little bigger party. Um, we will have, we, the, the plan is that Ori and um, one of the, you know, whichever two mind dwarf we have follows Thrain and the one mind dwarf follows Balin. That would give us six free general influence, which is enough to play any of our characters except for uh, Thorin if we need to. Thorin, I guess, is a backup and or, um, you know, backup in case something happens to Thrain, really. Maybe we could include Dane in our... Um, we do have some men and men factions. Uh, Gimli can at least try... Oh, we probably got rid of him. Um, it's a little outside of the area that we mostly have, but it's only going to be a sideboard resource. I think I'm going to include the Woodman just to have bit more in the way of balance with our different resource types because we are pretty item heavy here. Um, so I'm hoping we now have some can't I, you know some more stuff to cancel attacks. Um, 
Goldberry and Gollum can both cancel attacks. We have a different setup. We're now invulnerable to unhappy blows. We have given up some capabilities to the west, but and we've kind of geographically shifted a bit over east. So now instead of a between Rivendell and Grey Havens, this is focused really in and around Rivendell. What else? What else? Then there's the hazards. We didn't really get a chance to do the Ulith Lieutenant trick. What I was really hoping at some point is to do, you know, first Orc, then Orc Lieutenant, then Ulith Lieutenant. That just didn't work. I know the Orc Guards... Oh, wait, no, this is the wrong one. I think, actually, I'll bring back the Orc Warband. Um, I like the, the wizard's version. Um, they can hit someone even in a dark domain. Now, they're weak on their own. But, you know, play them in combos, play them with something else. Five at seven is still, you know, and with Minion Stir, they can be stronger still. Um, I think this is stronger. Still not 100% sure it would prevail against, or actually I'm pretty sure it wouldn't, against that camping deck that Theo threw at us. And to be honest, uh, I... I, I had known of strategies involving Lucky Search and using the, um, you know, the, the Inrune Shield, but whew, that, that really kicked my butt, and I am not sure if I have a good answer for that. Um, what, am I what was that agent's name? Elenia or something? What would Dream Call want? Agent should still appear in the text, though. Especially since if we're planning on playing... Oh, we didn't have my precious in the sideboard. Oh, we do? Yeah. What's the name again? I already forgot. Karndun is actually a fairly popular place for um, for hero decks to go. It's you know because it's so close to Rivendell, uh, you have a very short sight path, and you know hanging out there can mess someone up. Plus, we plan on hanging around Angmar a fair amount, so an agent that can cover us there. If we, um, you know, go there and our opponent wants to follow us, say to do a influence attempt like I tried in my last ditch attempt, um, could cover our characters. So with this, I think we do have an improved deck. Uh, maybe I'll get a chance to um, play it against someone. Although I've I've recorded all eight videos so far without uploading any of them. I didn't want to advertise the composition of this deck before the games. I am going to upload after this one, so if I ever play with this deck again, it'll have some weird ramifications because anyone might know exactly what I'm packing and planning. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, found it somewhat informative, and I will be continuing to make videos. My next one planned is One Ring Strategy, and hope you've enjoyed this so far.